Good morning. How are you guys? It's uh, like 10.30 a.m. on Saturday, the 16th, waiting for everybody to come out from the hotel. We've been getting hotels the last few days because everybody is sick of sleeping in the van, so we're finding some some decent hotels outside of where we play to <laughs> just to feel human, you know, a little bit. It's pretty much over. We're going to do Reggae Rise Up tomorrow. Sunday, St. Patty's Day. Yeah, should be should be good. We got a good set. All the bangers, you know, everybody's singing. And then take off and go home. <laughs> After the show. Yeah, we're uh everybody's ready. Everybody's ready to get home. I just want like I crave structure. Like whenever I go out and do tours, you know, especially when we're like sleeping in the van, I need to be able to spread out at a desk or something with some coffee and then, you know, work on work on things like my journal write in my journal like you know figure out what content I'm going to make that day but what do I need to do to you know promote the, the shows I just like getting up and like having something familiar and it's like this job is like the complete opposite of that where the, the you struggle to, to to maintain familiarity to to keep that structure and you just have to sort of adapt daily, you know, if you want anything, anything close to what you have at home, you know. So I like when we stay at like the nice like three star hotels, like the Holiday Inns and stuff, where they have like coffee downstairs. There's usually like a bunch of tables and things like that you can go sit at and I just sit quietly and just I just love it I love sitting quiet and working on my stuff and drinking coffee <laughs> speaking of which I forgot to go down to the lobby and grab some shit coffee might need to do that shows have been really great thank you guys so much for for being there hanging out coming to the shows um means a lot but we had a really good B VIP last night in Gainesville I was surprised with Gainesville the the ticket sales did really well considering spring break and you know reggae rise up in town and everything not quite in town but it's like a couple hours away but you know people travel for that so it's going on right now I was so surprised that we had the draw that we had last night it was a, it was a great show it was loud um, there was a lot of fun and the VIP was was great and got a bunch of gifts and treats from our friends the Flemings thank you very much as always you guys you guys do too much every time we appreciate you and today we have the day off we're gonna go to St. Pete and see the ladies the wives are in town so they've been hanging out at an Airbnb all weekend so we're gonna go chill with them today so yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back home, seeing my kids, and sort of getting back to that typical day where I just I get up and get the kids on the bus and then make my coffee and then go down and sit in the studio and do some live streaming, work on music, make videos, like that I I love that. I love doing that. It's something that I feel like I, I get re energized for you know, when we go out on tour for for a month or whatever, I can't wait to get back home and work on those things. Just like when I'm at home for a month, I can't wait to get back on tour and play shows, you know? Um, so I think it's like a good thing. I watched the Crow trailer, the 2024. Man. I would be happier with it. All they have to do is change their names. It's not Eric Draven and Shelley Webster. That that is I wish they would just change their names and it wasn't Eric Draven and Shelley Webster. 
because it's a completely different situation. They're, they're like, even in the manner that they're killed is, it's not, it doesn't match the comic book and it doesn't match, it doesn't even match the last movie. <clears throat> and I watched, I watched the reviewer bring this up. He's like, honestly, it's, it's kind of strange because in the 1994 movie, the way, you know, it all goes down is pretty brutal, you know, really brutal. You know, there's, they're getting shot and stabbed and then there's the, you know, the R word. Like, that is, he made a point is like, that is something that Eric Draven would come back for to make the wrong things right. But like, in this one, you see they, they get suffocated in plastic bags. Now, the imagery definitely creepy right but for one the plastic bag death has always boggled my mind it's like just poke a hole in the fucking mouth like or maybe maybe see I've never been suffocated with a plastic bag well my brother tried it I think when we were young but um I guess not really but it's like you like maybe you're panicking too much and you don't think to poke a hole in the bag or you're trying to get out I, I don't know you're trying to like wrestle the person that's doing I don't know but that to me is a little bit strange and it's just not as brutal from the trailer anyway it's not as brutal as it should be you know you have to set it up you have to create this pain you know this that he he has to come back for and and, and correct and everybody that was involved is going to get it you know that's what I love. I mean, it's one of the things I love about The Crow. It's like, who doesn't love a good re revenge movie, though, you know? It's my favorite movie of all time, 1994. Um, but, you know, it has its flaws. It's not It's not a perfect movie, you know? There's definitely a couple parts, especially looking back as, as an adult now and watching that movie. I just watched it recently because this whole hype about the new one. I wanted to go back. And, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some parts where you're kind of like, that's a little bit silly, you know? the core of it these two people fall in love they're they're each other's person and they get murdered in this way and he comes back to avenge their deaths and that's like the core of it you know and it's, it's a love story you know tragic love story but it doesn't it doesn't fit uh, I don't know I don't know objectively it looks good it doesn't have much of a vibe. There's not much of a tone to it. Like there was such an aesthetic with the 94 movie. You know, I just wish they would have done something aesthetically with it. Maybe desaturated a little bit or something. Even, even if it had that like Netflix vibe that there, th those Netflix movies have a look to them where I, th I feel like they're mimicking the, like the film look of the nineties, like stranger things and all that. Like, it doesn't even look like that. It just looks like a John Wick movie, you know. I mean, he look he looks badass. I don't particularly like the makeup. I don't like the hair. I I think they could have at least like given him, you know, the the wild hair. But you know, you go back to them. The, they're doing it as like a, it's a modern retelling. So it's like a, it's like a modern story for for Gen Z basically. It's like the new Turtles movie is a kid's movie, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't really made for me, of course, there's nostalgia there, and it was fun, I enjoyed it, I liked the Turtles movie, Mutant Mayhem, but the kids liked it, you know, my daughter loved it, it's for kids, it's not for us, but when are they going to give us something for us, that's what I'm asking, when will they, <clears throat> when will they make a Turtles movie, and a Batman movie, like, for the adults, man, the people that grew up with this stuff. Like, it's cool, you know, you get get the kids involved and, like, you want, obviously, that's how things keep going. The, the kids got to be into it, you know? I get it, but, like, man, somebody needs to serve the 40-year-olds. Let me know in the comments if I'm correct. <laughs> There's this guy that's been making these turtles, like, CGI fight scenes. They're only, like, 30 seconds long but they're incredible man they have that the 1990 movie the turtles movie aesthetic and 
it just looks awesome and it's like dude that's what we want you know that's what we want these hollywood studios don't listen to the fan base they just don't you know there's i bet there's so many movies out there that have been like just uh stuff like scripts like just thrown in a closet and locked up that would have been so awesome if if the the people involved would would have let it go down and let it like how like you take an IP that has a fan base for a reason and then you change everything about it you know to match with modern times or something it's just like no give me what we loved about the source material you know we have this talk all the time in the van like with we're all fanboys of something and you know whether it's Star Wars or Dune or Batman or the Turtles you know it's just like man I don't know I, I would just love to see in my lifetime in the next 10 years at least I'd love to see some somebody take one of these IPs and really go back and and I want to see like with the crow I want to see the 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 panels come to life on screen I want to see the graphic novel on screen you take the graphic novel you put it on screen that's it dude people would love it they would go apeshit remember Sin City Sin City had that black and white Brandon Lee wanted The Crow to be shot in black and white but you know there was no way that was going to happen but 10 years later they did it in Sin City and it crushed you know, look at 300. It wasn't black and white, but it was like really desaturated and kind of weird. It had, a, it had a, a style to it. It was stylized. It crushed. You know, just give the people what they want. All right, we're taking off here in a few. Um, I guess thank you guys very much for coming to the shows. We will see you very soon. Reggae Rise Up tomorrow. Right on.